what was missing was, uh, you know, a clear, you know, technical direction. I think that there was, I'd always been a fan of Adrian and his cars going way back to late in house times in the, in the late 1980s. And Adrian was, you know, the very best um, that's ever been in, in, in Formula One. It was a question of, uh, you know, how could we entice, how could we attract Adrian to join you know, the Red Bull team? And that's where David Coulthard came into play, who was our driver at the time, and had obviously worked with Adrian for, for many years at both, at both Williams and, uh, and McLaren. The opportunity now with, with Red Bull to join a team, but still very much a fledgling team, and to be involved with Christian on, on the, trying to grow that team with the aspiration to, to win races. I mean, kind of winning championships seemed a very distant dream at that point, but to try and win races was something that really intrigued me. Sebastian worked incredibly hard. Um, he was incredibly dedicated. He was often you know, the last guy in the engineering office at the end of a Friday or, or Saturday, his debriefs, I mean, it took him what, half, <laughs> half an hour to do the, yeah. to do the formation lap. Yeah. Uh, um, he was very um, methodical in his approach and he, he drove himself hard. And if he made a mistake, then he would want to understand how he made that mistake what he could do in the better and he very rarely mistake, made the same mistake twice. So I think that dedication and that played through into the team as well. So then the team were often prepared to put in that extra mile because they saw his work and commitment that he was prepared to put in. And that dedication helped us as, from an engineering side to, to make the car better. I mean, Adrian is, the only bloke that can see air. Um, <laughs> you know, he lives in the matrix. He's been the conductor of the technical orchestra for, you know, all these, all these years now. And, um, but he's still very hands-on, you know, he's still at his drawing board. I think it's probably the only drawing board in Formula One. I had to argue with Ron Dennis to wrestle it out of McLaren. Um, obviously highs and lows during, um, you know, all these years, but it's always been fun. It's always been about the racing and we've always had, had great support from, you know, from, from the group and from, from Dietrich, from, you know, from Helmut. And uh, that's enabled us to go about our jobs and just focus on being the best race team that we can be. The, the championships is years of, of 10 to 13 were all with the Renault V8. Um, we had a great relationship with the engineers at Renault. I think it's fair to say they didn't have the most powerful V8, but it was a product that they tailored to suit our car. Uh, we have some particular requirements, particularly in the way we use the exhaust, and they were bent over backwards to, to maximise what we needed from the engine. We then went into the hybrid era and Renault in the first year, 2014, kind of made a, interpreted the regulations a lot, as well as Mercedes. Um, so we were quite a long way behind. In, in the first year, you accept that. We all make mistakes. Chassis, engine, new regulations. You can get it right, you can get it wrong. They got it wrong. When the engine at the start of 15 seemed, if anything, actually worse than the 14 engine, that was a pretty disillusioning moment. And you then realised that in your foreseeable future, if you do a spectacular job, you might snatch the odd win here or there, but you're never going to win a championship. So that was a reset, um, which I think we all had to come to terms with, particularly after that period of kind of dominating the second half of 2009 and then the subsequent four championships that this was not going to be our reality for the foreseeable future. Well, you learn that, um, you know, where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are. And as Adrian says, you know, during that period, it was, it was tough because we come off the back of four dominant championships and suddenly this barren period and another team has, you know, was just light years ahead of, it, of, of everybody. And, and the most important thing was keeping the team together, you know, focusing on the things that we could control, that we could influence. And, uh, you know, bit by bit, we, um, we're able to snatch wins, you know, here and there in every season bar one. Um, and it was always a question of, right, okay, we just got to make sure we get, 
get the right power unit um, you know as part of that package the engine for 19 was a you know was a step forward and uh, we were then able to to really start to get the foundations in place for a, for a championship challenge. Statistically, obviously, RB18 has been our best car. It's a car I think we can be very proud of in as much as we had a, a tight championship battle through 21, obviously. So we, we kept developing the car well into the season. And of course, when you have limited resources, um, then if you're putting research and development into that car, then that research and development you're not putting into this brand new, very new car for the, for the new regulations. Um, which we knew were coming, obviously. So it was a difficult balancing act, but we focused on trying to get the fundamentals right, trying to get the, the package in, in the way that would, including suspension, front and rear suspension, the, the layout of the monocoque, the layout of the radiators and so forth, so that we would have a package that hopefully, even if it didn't start out as the quickest car, we could develop through the season. In the pre-season testing, we were a little bit worried before we got there. So we had some, we'd already done a little bit of research and, and knew roughly what we needed to do to, to improve it. So that when we put the race one package on in Bahrain, just before the race, then that catapulted us from definitely behind Ferrari to broadly level, let's say. The car definitely had some weaknesses in the, in the first half of the season. We still have some weaknesses, of course, but but we, we reduced those weaknesses and, and um, certainly by the second half then we had a fully competitive package. Well, it was a very tough year um, and when you look at the statistics, it, it looks like we totally you know, dominated. The first half of the season, you know, Ferrari, you know, they had their chances. They had a, probably a, a, a quicker package, but you know, Max was outstanding um, throughout the year, but particularly in that first half. The reduction in wind tunnel testing means we can therefore evaluate less, less different components, less different ideas. If we're really smart and always put on the right things on the model, then of course it doesn't make much difference. Ferrari won't be resting on, they, they will be kind of sourcing out where their weak areas, the, they had a couple of reliability problems, they, they obviously had made a couple of pit wall mistakes, so they'll be right back. And then, of course, you obviously saw Mercedes starting with a car that was quite a long way off the pace and evolving it to the point they won the, won the, the last race but one. So we know they will be right there. So it's, it's going to be a tough year for sure. <laughs> I tell you what, Adrian in the classics, he's a pretty mean driver. I mean, uh, he's uh, won some big races at, at, uh, at Goodwood. I'm, not, I'm nowhere near as brave as he is. He's fearless. 